What's going on Tarantula family? Today I am rehousing my rubber ducky isopods. I got these from Isopod Source and I had them in a temporary enclosure. Sadly I found one of them dead and it really worried me. So I decided to contact the seller and he told me I needed to get my hands on some garden lime and limestone. I decided to do some further research and a few of my friends told me getting some earthworm casting and some charcoal would be a great idea. All three of these items you can find at Home Depot. You could probably grab all three of them for less than $30. This video isn't really intended for educational purposes. I am just showing you my setup of my new rubber ducky isopods. If you guys would like a real tutorial on how to keep isopods, you could go check out the isopod source YouTube or his website on his blog and he will teach you how to take care of these things perfectly. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Take it easy and yeah, enjoy. So I'm starting this video just adding the earthworm soil. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you guys the isopods, but I'm gonna start off just showing you how I made this enclosure. I'd say the cost of material for everything at Home Depot was less than $30. So right here, I'm about to add the charcoal. I broke it up into a bunch of fine pieces and I'm just going to mix it into the soil. And I'm just going to fast forward through all of this stuff so it doesn't bore the shit out of you guys. So at this point of the video, I'm starting to add garden lime. I used about half a teaspoon inside the soil and I also put a little spoon of garden lime inside some water and diluted it. I'm going to add the water to the soil later and mix it up, but right now I'm just using the hard material and mixing it through the soil. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want any pockets of lime and pockets of dirt that don't have lime, so the more you mix it the better for the isopods. Next, I'm just going to add a large cork flat to the enclosure. And I'm also about to grab that diluted garden lime and pour it inside of the enclosure. I don't really think I did this step correctly, so please um, don't copy this video word for word or think I know what I'm doing because I am new to keeping rubber ducky isopods, but if you guys need help taking care of your isopods, you can always go check out Isopod Source and they can help you out. They also just posted a video of how to care for your rubber duckies and that's the reason I was able to pick up all that stuff actually from Home Depot because I saw it on their video. So yeah, just right there I just poured the water into the dirt. I poured a little bit onto the cork flat. I don't know if that really helps or not, but it's just, you know, me trying to do what I think will help my pets. Next, I'm adding some moss to the corner of the enclosure. Uh, I try to make sure that the moss wasn't above the air hole so none of the isopods would escape. And I was told to add it just to one side of the enclosure. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I just listened because the people who told me that are successful keeping their rubber duckies. After that, I added some dead leaves and just placed them on one side of the enclosure. The only thing I really need now is a piece of limestone or a piece of coral, but I'm waiting to get it in right now. And my isopods really needed a rehouse, so I couldn't wait much longer. Alright, so we're approaching the end of the video now. And I'm just going to show you guys the new enclosure and the isopods running around in their new home. I will catch you later and I will update you if they are doing good or they are doing bad. 
Take it easy, tarantula family.